What is up guys, 70 Savage here, coming at you today with a very exciting project. Today we are going to be installing these seat swivels into the van. So seat swivels are one of the most important features of any van build because they open up the amount of usable space in your van by so much. In this van, we are gonna do both the passenger and driver's seat as seat swivels. Now there are a ton of options when it comes to actually picking the type of seat swivels you want to install. If you're lucky enough to have the factory Mercedes seat swivels in your van when you buy it, then you're good to go and you don't need to install any of them. But unfortunately, Mercedes just doesn't put those seat swivels in very many vans and it's extremely expensive and time intensive to install them after the fact. So most people end up going for an aftermarket option. In my opinion, the best seat swivels that you can buy aftermarket are the Alpine Mechanisms version. These are compatible with Sprinter vans from present all the way back to 2007. These are the exact same brand that I used in Evangelina Jolie. And I actually made a video about how to install last year's version. Thankfully, you guys watched that video enough to where they actually sent me these ones for free. I know some of you are still gonna think that I'm selling out. And all I have to say to that is if I am gonna sell out, it's gonna be for a lot more than some seat swivels. I'm still gonna be providing an honest review and install on these. If I don't like certain things, then I'm going to mention it. So you can buy these seat swivels at Alpine Mechanisms Dot com. I am super stoked to start installing these things. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Before we do that, I'm actually going to read their official instructions on their website. To summarize this in about 10 seconds, sounds like there's four main steps. We gotta remove the seat in the sprinter van. We gotta cut the locating pins off of that seat. We have to install the Alpine seat swivel to the seat base in the sprinter van. Then take the seat, put it on top of the swivel. Let's open them up. There was not a lot in those two boxes. The swivels themselves are very simple. There's just two plates that swivel around the center here. These things are pretty darn heavy. They probably weigh like 20 or maybe even 30 pounds each. Other than the swivels, you get yourself the hardware that it takes to install them. And then on the driver's side here, there's an extra one that you need to relocate the e-brake. They're definitely an interesting color. It's like this metallic bronze looking color with a green in the middle. I don't think you're gonna be able to see much of this when we're done, but we'll see. We're gonna start off with the passenger side first because it is a little bit simpler as you don't have to deal with the e-brake relocation. A couple things we got to do to remove this seat. First one is there are four bolts, one on each corner. I actually lost my special set of Torx drivers, so I just used a regular wrench and it was able to take these bad boys off pretty easily. And then the next thing you need to do to remove this is unplug all of these wiring harnesses here. Before you unplug any of those wiring harnesses underneath the seats, you need to make sure to disconnect the negative terminal on the battery. If you leave the battery connected and unplug those wiring harnesses, you will get like an airbag malfunction code. Make sure you grab a photo before you actually unplug them so you remember where to put them back. You only have to take a couple of these out, by the way. Only the ones that go down through that piece of foam. By the way, this is what it looks like inside of the passenger seat. There's almost nothing in there, which is why most people put their diesel heaters in here. So this right here is the absolute worst part of the install. We are going to take our Dremel and grind off these two pins. You gotta grind these off so that the seat can fit flush with the swivel. The Dremel with a cutoff wheel is my tool of choice. You can use whatever you want to cut these guys off. I should probably be wearing some gloves for this. The idea is that you just want to grind these pins down so they are completely flush with the seat rails here. That went through literally an entire cutoff wheel on this thing. When you're left over with these little pins, you can do something fun, like make a necklace out of them. Maybe if you're ambitious, you can have your dentist install it. You want to clean them off with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol that I have in this bottle right here just to get any remaining dust or potential grease. At this point, we want to cover that bare steel with a little bit of Rust-Oleum so that it doesn't rust over time. I use this stuff in the can, link in the description below. I just spray it into a little cup and then use a paintbrush to paint it on. While that paint is drying, we now need to put the seat swivel onto the seat base in the van. They actually both fit on either side. You just gotta flip them up and rotate them into the correct position. This is the correct position. Driver's side, passenger side, 
Make sure that the little hole is towards the inside of the van. Bolt hole thingy that you're gonna put the switch on is to the back of the van. Next, we're actually going to need to mount this thing to the seat base. You can see here, we now have four locations for the countersink bolts into the seat base. Take out the four bolts that do not have the nuts on the back of them. Take your Allen wrench. I use extra long ones to compensate for my strength. And then you guessed it, we wanna put one of these bolts in each of the four corners. At this time, we are not going to tighten them down super tight though. First thing we want to do is fish out the wires through that hole so that we can access them when we put the seat on. Now what we are going to install is this locking nut tab switch thing. We can tell that it goes in this hole and not this one because we see this weld nut sticking up from the top here. Now that we have it in position, we are going to tighten this nut down. The idea is that when this thing is in a locked position, the pin sticks out into the bottom plate, but when you put it in unlocked position, it is not touching the bottom plate at all so that this can swivel freely without scratching. Next, we are going to install this little doohickey on the front outer corner of the swivel seat. The reason that this piece exists, which we're going to install underneath this bolt, is to further stiffen the entire seat swivel. To be honest, I never noticed a lack of stiffness without these installed, which didn't come with last year's version. We're gonna take our support bracket, slightly kind of lift this up and push it in underneath the bolt. Now, in order to install it fully, you wanna press down on the top of the seat and push it all the way. You can tell it's good because when the seat is locked and in the fully frontal position, these plates are pinched together by the support bracket so that they cannot go up and down very easily at all. And now we are finally good to tighten down the four bolts attaching the swivel to the pedestal. It is finally time to take our seat and put it on to the seat swivel. Before we do that, let's unlock the seat swivel, slide it about 20 degrees is what they say. Enough to expose these holes so that we can put bolts up through the bottom. This time we're gonna use the four bolts that have the nuts on the back of them. And that is because our bolt is gonna come up through the top and our nut is going to be screwed onto the top of that bolt, which I can't do with one hand. Alrighty, our passenger seat swivel is fully installed. Let's go ahead and test it out. All we gotta do, flip the switch in the back. And then we just turn it around. Shiggity diggity. This is the first time we've had this seat facing backwards in the van. Overall, that passenger install was insanely simple. If I wasn't filming, it probably would have taken me about an hour total. Now it is time to move to the driver's seat. So we got the driver's seat swivel completely installed already. Only differences with this one, obviously the orientation challenge is now that we have this swivel installed, we can't actually use it yet. We have the manual e-brake, this bad boy, which prevents the seat from swiveling around. It actually collides with it right there. So we need to modify this e-brake with the little modification bracket that they include in this kit. We're also gonna trim off some of the plastic. Let's get started on that part. First thing we're gonna do is pop this cover off right here. I've never done this before, but it sounds like you kind of just pull it towards the back. Ow. <laughs> kind of easy. You just want to pull it off towards this way. Try not to cut yourself like I just did. And then there's a little plastic pin in the bottom. You just pop that out nice and easy. I got a boo-boo. The leak has been patched. So right now you can see the e-brake is attached with those two big bolts. What we're gonna do is unattach it 
install this thing where those bolts are. And then we're gonna reattach the e-brake to the bottom two bolts here. It's basically gonna bring the e-brake down and point it a little bit downwards to stay out of the way of this swivel. Let's take these guys off. The e-brake has been unmounted. We wanna now mount this lowering bracket where the e-brake was previously mounted to. This time we're gonna use the countersink bolts. We do need to push this cable down slightly through a rubber grommet that's in the floor of the van. You wanna make sure not to push the grommet out as you're doing this. This right here is the e-brake cable, which you can tell because it's right next to this factory wiring boot that goes up underneath the driver's seat. I'm actually gonna pull it from this side a little bit to ensure that this grommet doesn't come out while we're pushing it. It's a matter of kind of working this cable out without pulling this grommet all the way through. I feel like I should have a grommet right here. Maybe I need to call Mercedes about that. This is literally just a hole in the floor of the van. And before we can actually physically reattach this e-brake to the new bracket, we need to actually cut some of this plastic trim off for the e-brake to be able to sit low enough to line up with the bolt holes, which we're going to do now. So we cut about an inch off of the bottom of this plastic on the underside of the e-brake handle. And now the e-brake is sitting low enough where we can put these two bolts in. These are the ones that were in it originally. At this point, we just want to tighten these bad boys down. I forgot to mention, you want to make sure the weld nuts on the bottom of the bracket are facing outwards. That's going to give the e-brake enough clearance to clear these bolts when you pull it up. Final step that we have to do is reinstall this piece of the plastic cover. Problem is, it now collides with this bracket that we've installed. So we have to mark where it collides and cut off that piece of plastic. So this right here is what it ends up looking like when you're done trimming it. I did have to trim some off the bottom here. We trimmed some off the top here, actually quite a bit off the top here. You're still able to use the e-brake like this and it doesn't collide with anything. And the best part is we now have swivelage on both the driver and passenger side. So that covers it for the full install of the swivel seats. Overall, this install is extremely simple. I actually recommend this as one of the first things you do to your van because it is so simple and it provides so much functionality. Now let's dive into a short review of these seat swivels. First thing to mention is the overall build quality of the swivels, which I think is really, really high. Between the materials that they use and the engineering behind how the swivel works, I think this is the best on the market. To give you a little demo of how the seat swiveling action works so that we can review it, all you gotta do is move the seat forward then you take it and you swivel it around just like that. On the cheaper swivels, you're going to find that they squeak when they rotate around and that they're really, really wobbly as you do the rotating action. These ones, however, are not squeaky whatsoever. Super smooth rotating action. Pro tip, you can leave your regular driving modes on M1 and M2 and you can set the third location to the forward front facing position that you need it to be in for it to swivel around. The other thing that I love about these swivels is that they are super low profile. They only add a half inch to the total seat height, which means that in the forward driving position, as long as you don't use the seat completely bottomed out, you're probably gonna be good driving comfortably with these seat swivels. That being said, when you do swivel them around to the backwards facing position, they are pretty darn high off of the ground. I am a super tall dude, I'm 6'5", and my feet barely touch the floor. The reason they're comfortable forwards, but not so much backwards, is because the front of the floor is much higher than the back cargo portion of the floor. The colors of the plates aren't terrible. I mean, I would have preferred probably just a matte black or a dark matte gray like the last ones, but I definitely do not like the green on the inside here. I don't think that that's gonna match a lot of people's builds. It's kind of a military green color. Nice part about that is you're not gonna see it most of the time. This seat is in the forward swivelable position. It would never actually be that far forward normally. Kind of like that one, you obviously can't see the green there. The other coloring that I do not like at all is this green logo on the seat swivel. I think this is just a sticker and I might actually peel it off. Yeah, I'm gonna do that right now. Good to know that's just a sticker. No longer a complaint. Overall, I think those are pretty minor qualms and I absolutely love how they turned out. They open up the front space inside of this van so much. Gonna be hard to show this on camera, but it really feels like a miniature living space in the front of the van here that can support two or three people just hanging out. As for an overall rating, I give these seat swivels an 8.5 out of 10. They're definitely not the cheapest, but I think that these are the best aftermarket seat swivels you can buy. 
only being topped by the factory Mercedes ones. The other thing about Alpine mechanisms is they are obviously the innovator in this space. There are other companies that have copied last year's design. If you're not going to go cheap, it's really important that you're always supporting the innovators. That's something that I at least always live by. Not to mention Alpine is partnering with people like me who are content creators. I think that's super cool and not just because I got free seat swivels. If you enjoyed this video, please slap that subscribe button. We are going to continue making videos as we build out this van and build things along the way. If you liked this particular video, slap that like button below. It makes me feel a lot better about myself. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.